Hello, everybody. I am Drew Duncan. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is all at Drew Duncan Radio. A quick look at the L.A. Chargers and the Kansas City Chiefs getting set to take the stage on a primetime Monday night game tonight. And to be honest with you, what I'm looking for in this game is for somebody to step up in this division and assume ultimate control. Because if you were to ask me right now, I would tell you that overall the AFC West is very mediocre. And the proof is in the pudding, as they say. Right now, the AFC West, out of division games against teams with a winning record, is an astounding 4-13. and In fact, the Chiefs, Raiders, and Chargers have all lost games to the Houston Texans. So the Texans are 3-0 and against teams in the AFC West. Denver is an astounding 0-5 against teams with a winning record. They've blown four fourth-quarter leads. Oh, and in case you missed it, since the inception of the NFL, no team had ever come back and won a football game after being down by 20 points at halftime. Denver allowed that stat to go null as the Vikings became the one and only football team to accomplish that feat. I know a lot of people are going to say, well, the Kansas City Chiefs were without Patrick Mahomes for a little while. Well, they were without Patrick Mahomes when they beat the Minnesota Vikings. And by the way, they lost to the Colts, Texans, and Packers. They are 2-3 and against teams with a winning record outside of the division. The Raiders have yet to beat anybody with a winning record. The Broncos have yet to beat anybody with a winning record. And the Chargers are 2-2. and Which also means, by the way, a couple of losses are from teams that just aren't very good. Not even above 500 record. So with the AFC West right now, I'm wondering how good anybody is going to do in the playoffs. Because the bottom line to this scenario is nobody's taking control. All these teams are very up and down. And by the way, we had this conversation as we do every single year with the LA Chargers. They are expected to be a top tier team in the NFL. Why is that the expectation? Regardless of what you think about Phillip Rivers, he's the reason why. Because as I made mention of before, Phillip Rivers is a guy who's throwing to who you couldn't name half the receivers that he's completed passes to over his span in the NFL. And I know a lot of people are going to allude to that team. They had LaDainian Tomlinson, they had Gates, they had Rivers, they had this, they had that. And they couldn't get the job done, right? Blew that 21 to nothing lead that they had against the New England Patriots. Blew that lead that they had against the Ravens in the playoffs. A lot of blown leads. And see, and that's been the thing, right? That's been my knock on the Kansas City Chiefs. The inability to play a full four-quarter game of football. It seems like they're good for one quarter, maybe two quarters, and that's it. They don't have a very good defense. They're at the bottom of the barrel in terms of that in the NFL. I mean, I think the word is out on the AFC West. It's not what it used to be. It hasn't been what it was in probably a good 10 years. See, it used to, maybe even more, because I remember when I was growing up, right, they had everything set up different, and there were five teams in that AFC West. Denver, Seattle, then San Diego, right, the Raiders. Nobody wanted to play anybody that was in the AFC West, the Kansas City Chiefs, because it wasn't going to be an easy win. The fact of the matter is simply this. The AFC West may be overrated as a whole, and the Kansas City Chiefs may be the most overrated football team right now in all the NFL. Look, we know what Patrick Mahomes is capable of. We know who he is. And a lot of people are going to look to Patrick Mahomes and say, but look at this team that he's got around him. That's why some people believe that Deshaun Watson is a better quarterback because Patrick Mahomes is throwing to Tyreek Hill, the fastest man in the NFL, but he's been out for a couple of games though, right? So there's going to be a justification for that maybe. But what is this whole thing then about next man up if it's all about being plagued with injuries? How many times has Aaron Rodgers had to carry an injury-riddled Green Bay Packers football team on his back? The fact of the matter is this. In most scenarios, these teams are simply getting outcoached and they're getting outplayed. That's just the bottom line. 
And so tonight, with the Chargers and the Chiefs, somebody's going to have to step up, dominate a football game from beginning to end, and that's going to be that. That's what I'm looking for, especially from the Kansas City Chiefs, because they are supposed to be the premier team in the AFC West. There weren't anybody or there was not anybody that I don't think was talking about the Denver Broncos winning more than seven games this season. After that whole thing happened with Antonio Brown and and the fallout that he's had in the NFL, particularly with the Oakland Raiders, after that, I don't think anybody really believed that the Raiders were going to be a very good football team this year. These were supposed to be the two premier teams in the AFC West, the matchup that we're seeing tonight, which is probably why it was saved for a Monday night game because they were supposed to be the two best. Instead, both teams have been fairly mediocre. The numbers for Mahomes are incredible. But I have said over and over again, and the example that I have used is Peyton Manning in the Super Bowl. When Denver got thrashed, what would you have rather had? The scrambling ability of Russell Wilson, his ability to run all over the field and create on his own, and a defense that can be solid and win you football games, or... Would you have over 300 yards passing and a loss? Especially when those numbers can be tainted. As was the case in that Super Bowl. The very real reality of it is, is we'll see Patrick Mahomes throw for 150, 200 yards in one quarter and then throw for 100 yards the rest of the football game. Now, that's not to take away from what he did in that quarter, and that's not to take away from his capability because I'm a huge fan of Patrick Mahomes, as most people are. And I know that he's been battling injury this year. He had the ankle. He had the dislocated knee. I get all that. And I still think that Kansas City brought him back too soon. I think that they needed to wait at least one more game. Regardless of that, the bottom line is Kansas City, this has got to be it. This has got to be their night to step up, dominate a game from beginning to end against a very mediocre Chargers team and win by 20 or 30 points. It's got to be a blowout. I mean, who gives a damn about TV ratings when you're on the field? You shouldn't. Who cares about, you know, winning an exciting game against a team like this? I understand that Russell Wilson talked about the 49ers game and how it was the most exciting game that he's ever been a part of, and that's coming from a guy who went to two consecutive Super Bowls and won one of them. I get that. But this is a Chargers team that is not good. That was a matchup of two elite football teams, or seemingly elite at least. The records at least indicate that they should be. In this game, not so much. In this game, it should be, I don't give a damn about her, you know historic comebacks. I don't give a damn about game-winning touchdown drives. I don't care about none of that. I want to go in, hit somebody in the mouth, and call it game over. I want to win by 35 points. I want to leave no doubt as to who the better team on the field was tonight. That's the mentality that I'm going with if I'm the Kansas City Chiefs. If I'm the Chargers, I want to do the same thing, but I need to do this because I've got to get my confidence back up. Because right now, making the playoffs, you are definitely on the outside looking in. Because the truth of the matter is this. The Baltimore Ravens are probably the best team in the AFC right now. And I know that people are going to say, well, the Chiefs beat the Ravens. But the Ravens' game plan in that football game, as I discussed when it initially happened, was just not very good. At first, they played aggressive football, and then they seemingly played intimidated football. I don't see the Ravens playing that way right now. I think they're playing their game against everybody, and I think that they learned a lesson from that game against the Kansas City Chiefs, to be perfectly honest with you. Because there were some times when Lamar Jackson just threw some plays up for grabs, and we haven't been seeing a whole lot of that since then. They definitely learned the art and control and mastery of what it is that they do and how to stick to that. So at bottom line, if Kansas City doesn't win tonight, I don't see any team in the AFC West winning a playoff game, maybe a wild card, but that would be about it. Guys, I am Drew Duncan. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Drew Duncan Radio. Additionally, you can find me on YouTube. Simply look for Drew Duncan. And as always, don't you dare touch that dial.